The value at risk calculation is designed to work with typical investments that have a monetary amount associated to them. But if you're trading on leverage in an account that uses lots to determine the position size and not a monetary amount, then how can you calculate the value at risk here? All will be revealed. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost-effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, Learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. The value at risk calculation isn't designed to use the concept of lots for a position size. It's designed to use a monetary amount, for example, $10,000 of Apple shares. So that poses a challenge for anyone wanting to use value at risk when they're trading in an account that uses lots. Basically, it's necessary to convert the lot size to a monetary value, and that's what I explained today. Let's make a start. So we need to do this because of this third component in the value at risk formula. So we've already covered the standard deviation and the Z score. So this is the last remaining piece of the puzzle. So a little bit more clarity over the problem or the challenge that we're faced with here as traders who are using an account that uses lots for position sizing. Value at risk is actually designed to work with more typical and usually longer term investments. So when building up a portfolio of stocks, for example, where you're investing a certain monetary amount in each of those stocks. So as we said, someone buying $10,000 of Apple shares. But in a leveraged account that you were using to trade, you could also, for example, go long with one lot of Apple, or for that matter, 0.1 lot of Euro dollar or whichever asset it is that you're trading. And as traders, we often tend to think of position sizing in terms of lots. But as we've said, the VAR calculation isn't designed to use lots, and so this is our challenge. So before we can calculate the VAR, we need to perform some form of conversion of that position in the lots into a monetary value. And the principle behind the calculation that I use personally is that I first calculate what I call a unitary monetary value of a price move in the particular asset I have a position in. And by unitary, I mean a price move of 1.0 for a 1.0 position size. And this is actually the most difficult part of the calculation. As soon as you have this, the rest is fairly simple. You simply then multiply this by the actual position size you have, and then multiply it by the asset's current price. And I'll explain in a moment why that is. So I can talk from the perspective of MQL5. Obviously, if you're using an alternative programming language, then you'll need to find the similar functions within that language in order to replicate this methodology. But in MQL5, we can take advantage of two properties of symbols that are available. The first of these is what's called the symbol trade tick size. And this defines what the smallest price change is in the particular asset that you're trading. So for example, if this is a five digit currency, then this smallest price change will be 0 0.00001. If however, you're trading a stock index, then the smallest price change might be 0 0.1. 
but this property will tell us what it is for the symbol we're trading so that we can do that programmatically. And then the second is what's called the symbol trade tick value. And this provides you with a monetary value of a one lot position moving by this smallest price change. And so by taking advantage of these two values means that we can now calculate this unitary monetary value simply by taking the tick value and dividing it by the tick size. So the actual line of code that you need here is this. You declare a double variable, which in this case I've just called monetary per unit per lot. And then you'd use a function called symbol info double, which is provided by the MQL5 platform. And you'd pass that two parameters. The first is the symbol that you're interested in. The second is the first of these properties, which is the symbol trade tick value. And then you simply divide that by the result of this second function call, which asks for the tick size. And it's as simple as that. You've now got that unitary monetary value. So taking this on a little further, we now need to declare a second variable, which I've called monetary of position. And it's this value that represents that monetary amount as opposed to just our lot size. So this is the value we're actually after. And this simply takes the absolute value of your position size. So if this is a short trade and therefore you have a negative lot size, for the purposes of this, we're not really interested in the fact that it's negative. The monetary size of the position, of course, will always be positive. And then we multiply that by this value we've calculated in the previous step, the unitary monetary value. And then we multiply that by the current close price of the asset we have our position in. And the reason we use that close price is because if you think about it, if the price went all the way down from where it is now, down to zero, the analogy of if this was a stock is that at that point, you'd have lost all of your money. So it's that price value that tells you effectively how much money you have invested in your position. Now, be careful, there's a gotcha here. The symbol property that we're using here, symbol trade tick value, may need converting into your account currency so that you're getting a value that matches the currency of your account. Now, for currencies, this generally isn't a problem. The vast majority of brokers will provide this tick value in your account currency. Now, there might be some brokers I'm not aware of that don't, but on the whole, that's the case, and it's certainly the case for DarwinX. But this usually will not be the case if you're trading stocks, stock indices, or commodities. These could be in other currencies. So, for example, if you're trading the Nikkei stock index, there's a pretty good chance that's going to be quoted in yen, as is the case with DarwinX. But not all brokers use the same methodology here. And so you really do need to do due diligence in order to work out what that is and determine whether you need to do a currency conversion or not. Now, to keep things simple and fairly generic, respective of which broker you use, in my examples that I use in code, I will tend to use currency pairs or FX so that you can try out this code without having to worry about those conversions. But I will also provide the code, which is very simple to perform those currency conversions if and when they're required. Which brings me on, of course, to the next episode where we'll actually start to code our value at risk in MQL5. Now, please do remember to subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button right below, and then you'll be notified when the next and any future episodes get released. Now, if this next episode is already released at the time that you're watching this video, then you'll see a link to it top right now. And so, until next time, trade safe.